in this tutorial, I'm going to go into detail as to how measurements work in Shoe Last Maker. So we're first to start off by hitting the build button here, and we can see the build form comes up, and you get uh, two columns, one with foot measurements and one with last measurements, uh, and then also options for adapting these measurements to templates and indexes uh, for selecting various uh, shoe sizes over here and then the show allowances to show the various allowances that can be set and uh, so I'm going to kind of get into each of these uh, one at a time in this tutorial. So I'll start off with uh, this also depends on whether you're working with a uh, bespoke last where a foot is present in the session or if you're just developing a standard last uh, for starters, I'll assume that you're just uh, starting off with a standard last and there's no foot present in the session. So here are the, uh, the primary measurements for the, the length of the last, uh, the ball girth, the instep girth, the ball width, and the heel height. I'll just jump over to the website here uh, with the corresponding post for this tutorial, which I'll provide a link for in the description of this video. Um, I've got... Uh, just uh, some figures showing the various measure primary measurement definitions. Uh, so heel height back here, you got the last full length and the last functional length. The, the full length goes right to the end and it's measured as the length of this uh, curve along the profile view of the last. And uh, the functional length is also that, but it doesn't include any kind of stylistic extension. As uh, last with a pointed toe, for instance, like this one, uh, they have uh, has to have extra space in the, along the length to make sp uh, given that the style is pointed and the, and the um, toes can't fit in that space and so you have to have that extra extra length there. This is the size index and the width index, which I'll get into in a little bit more detail shortly. And then uh, the ball width is measured not perpendicular to the central axis, but along the ball line. And then the instep girth and the ball girth. So those are the, the primary measurements that you see in the build form. A bit further down I have some charts that show how the various indexes line up with uh, various sizes and so I'll click that to just enlarge it make it a little easier to see. So a size index of 0 corresponds with a US kid size of 1.0 and then uh, a 1 index is goes up by a half size increment at 1.5 and that goes proceeds all the way up to an index of 25 for a kid's 13.5 and of course the US sizing system numbering starts over again uh, when it gets into adult sizes so US men's 1.0 is a size index 26 and then that goes all the way up to a, a 17 for a 58 and in fact the software you can put in larger indexes to I just didn't want to show a, a more uh, a more detailed chart than this just for the sake of keeping it simple here um, and now on the U.S. ladies, of course, is one point size different. Uh, one point five sizes different than the men's. So the one point five U.S. men's is is a three point oh women's, but they're both an index twenty seven. And then U.K. Uh, is a one size different from men's, and U.K. is the same for men's and women's. So the U.K. one point zero is a U.S. men two point zero, and they're both an index twenty eight. This is why just using an index system rather than having to have U.S. and men's uh, and U.S. women's and U.K. and child uh, child sizing all in the same kind of a system. So the index system I've set up here is just kind of a universal numbering system, and similar with the the widths. So whereas a a B in U.S. width is a D in U.K. width, but in this universal index system, they're both a four. So once you've decided uh, what in, uh, index you want to uh, build your shoe last in, you can go over into Shoe Last Maker and in the build form, you can type in the index you want. Uh, say it's a 35 is what you determined from your chart with a 7 index width. Hit the update button and the uh, shoe last measurements get updated. Next, I'll get into um, exactly what these adapt checkboxes do here. Uh, so, and it's it's dif different depending on whether you're working with a length, ball girth, instep girth, ball width, or heel width. So, uh, I'll start off with the, the length. So, if this checkbox is off, 
then when you build the last, you'll get the exact measurement you specify here as both the last length and the, the full length and the functional length. So 249.6 will be applied to both. Now if the adapt option is on, it's going to be adapting to the template. And so uh, this will be, the, the functional length will stay exactly as you specified it, but the, uh, the full last length, which has that stylistic extension in there, if the template has a stylistic extension, and if it does, it'll be, that stylistic extension will be graded to whatever this functional measurement is. Uh, so a smaller last, of course, has a less of a stylistic extension. A larger last has more of one. So once again, the functional length will be this uh, when the adapt option is on, and the uh, and then the full last length will be slightly longer, depending on whether you have a stylistic extension and template last toe style that is. Moving on to the adapt option for the ball girth and instep girth. Um, unlike with the uh, the length, there aren't uh, functional and uh, full values. They're just the uh, just the measurements themselves. Uh, similarly, though, if the adapt option is off, then these are the exact measurements you're going to get when you build your last. Whereas if the adapt option is on, then uh, <clears throat> the uh, it'll pull it from the difference between. Um, the girth measurements on the supplied body template um, and the size index specified on the body template, what that girth would have been, is, uh, is going to, that difference is going to be graded and applied to these numbers. So essentially, if um, a certain size had been specified for the template uh, uh, shoe last, if a certain uh, girth had been specified and that was more then what the girth would have been for the size index that was specified, then it's just kind of a, a bulkier last, and that, that extra bulkiness um, will get graded and applied to uh, the last being built in the, the current uh, session. Uh, and also, I want, on a related note I wanted to add is about uh, instep girth measurements, is that if you have the option on to trim a, a shoe last by the um, insert bottom surface or insert top surface um, like if uh, you're making like for an orthopedic last um, then you're going to when you edit the the uh, the girths this is the instep girth for instance you'll see in brackets a second number and that second number is the girth uh, for the trimmed last rather than the full last which you can see is less and I'll just end edit so you can see what I'm talking about by a shoe last trimmed by an insert or orthotic surface. So here would have been the normal shoe last bottom surface, and here is a foot shaped bottom surface by the, created by trimming by an insert or orthotic surface. And so you, you can clearly see that the girth passing over that would be quite a bit less, and that's what you see in brackets. And that can't be edited, but um, it's just yeah, there for so you so you know what that girth is on that shoe last. Moving on to the ball width, uh, once again, if the adapt option is off, then this uh, number that you have in here is going to get you is going to be applied to the the ball width of the built last, so it'll it'll be exactly that 91.2. Whereas if the adapt option is turned on, then uh, the relationship between the ball width and the ball girth. And this last is going to be made to be the same as the relationship between the ball width and the ball girth in the supplied template, uh, body template down here. And the idea is to keep the same aspect ratio essentially uh, between this last being built and uh, the template last being that was supplied. And finally is uh, heel height. Uh, the adapt function works pretty much the same as with the ball width. Uh, when it's turned off, the uh, number put in here will get you that will be the exact heel height on the built shoe last. Whereas when the adapt option is turned on, and the relationship being maintained here uh, is the ratio of the uh, last length to the heel height. Uh, so that that ratio is going to be the same on the built last as it is 
on the uh, last body template. And so it's trying to keep that same kind of um, aspect ratio or shape uh, in the built last as seen in the template last. Now I just want to circle back to the primary measurements themselves for a moment. You'll see that there's two columns, uh, one for the foot length, uh, foot measurements, and one for the shoe last measurements. Uh, the foot measurements are disabled, uh, and these work differently depending on whether you ha have a foot in a session because you're building a bespoke shoe last or if it's just a standard shoe last that you're building. Uh, say if there's a foot in a session, um, uh, you would have uh, imported it first, and then you would have had, um, could have hit, used the edit button to uh, to change the, the foot measurements. And then when you bring up <clears throat> the build form, then you would see those change measurements here in the build form. So that's like, if you want to edit them, that's where you edit them rather than here. Um, and then if you want to, uh, then, then you have the opportunity to set the allowances and uh, the allowances are then added on to the foot measurements to determine the shoe last measurements. So again, the shoe last measurements are just simply the foot measurements plus the allowances. Now if you're building a it's just a standard shoe last and there is no foot in the session, uh, then what these foot measurements are, uh, they're just giving you some idea of what the foot size would be for the shoe last you're building. So you have the, the shoe last numbers here, and then uh, the allowances are subtracted from those to show you what the uh, typical foot measurements would be for the shoe last that you're building. And that leads me to the um, allowances section. Uh, now there's a button here where you can toggle whether the allowances are shown. And once they're shown, you can see at the top there's sock thickness and insert depth room. These aren't necessarily allowances, but rather used to, to, uh, to figure out what the allowances are going to be. And so the sock thickness, uh, as you change it, you can see that these totals are getting updated. And I'll, I'll get into exactly what the calculations are there shortly. Uh, first though, uh, regarding insert depth room. So insert depth, or is it, I refer to it as uh, inserts in Shoe Last Maker, but that kind of is an umbrella term for orthotics. Uh, what is called uh, uh, insoles in some cases. Uh, this was essentially the, the part that's inserted into the shoe after it's assembled. Um, and so this number here, it's uh, 0 0.5, which is enough space for uh, a sock lining, essentially. And all the, the templates uh, for Shoe Last Maker have a standard, uh, typically have this uh, standard uh, depth for inserts of 0 0.5 millimeters. Uh, now, as you see, if we change that number up to, let's just jump way up to 5, for instance, and you can see nothing updated. The only thing that updated was the heel height, uh, because it's obvious that with the insert, increase in insert, insert, uh, insert depth, that that uh, is also going to the, uh, affect the heel height. Um, it's, it's also going to affect the, uh, the, the girth measurements, and uh, as well as some of the allowances. Um, however, the how the uh, how it does that effect is dependent on the template that's picked, and the real details of the template aren't known until after you hit the build, and the software starts to analyze the template. So that's just something to keep in mind: is that uh, when you put a new number in here, it's going to affect some of these other numbers, but you're not going to see the full effect of it until you've actually built the shoe last. And uh, so for that reason. Uh, some uh, people might prefer to uh, build it with a 0 0.5 millimeter insert depth, and then after the shoe last is built, you can, um, via the adjust drop down, choose to uh, uh, take the uh, increase that insert depth, which will dra drop the last bottom by however much you, uh, however much you want. Now moving on to the allowances themselves, you'll see that they're. Uh, it's a 2D array where the uh, the columns are uh, what is having an effect on the allowance as well as the, the total allowance at the end here and the rows are the measurements which uh, the allowance will be added on to. So with it comes to the uh, length allowance, uh, when you look at the, uh, the sock and how the sock affects that, it's essentially just uh, 
the it adding length to the front and the back of the foot. So for the sock column here, you see two millimeters, and that will be added to on to get uh, the total with a ball width. It's similar. It's the left and the right heel width, similar left and the right sides of the foot, medial lateral, and uh, the the uh, girth is uh, an approximation just by multiplying by three. And now moving on to the uh, space column. The space is just uh, a certain amount, just adding extra room so that there's uh, space for the the foot to, to move in the shoe. Or uh, for instance, in the length, you don't want the toes butting up against the end of the shoe. And so a certain amount of space is just added on. And unlike with a sock, this one's controlled directly by the user by putting ever, whatever number you want in here. So you put in 16 and we went from a 17.5 to an 18 to, uh, millimeter total uh, length allowance. And uh, the ball width, it tends to actually be less just because the bottom edge of the last tends to uh, be inside uh, the, the edges of the foot and kind of uh, bowing out as it goes up. Uh, but uh, that can, you can, these numbers obviously change depending on what kind of footwear you're designing, what the intended use is, etc. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, the default is zero for the heel width and the ball girth and the instep girth for a snug fit. And then moving on to this feather edge column. Feather edge is just like on a shoe last, you have a sharp edge um, where uh, on, on the from the insole or the bottom surface, uh, moving around the dorsal surface, surface there's that sharp edge there. Whereas on a foot you don't. So you'll see if you looked at a cross section, there's quite a bit more. Uh, there's there's this empty air space uh, between the the foot and the shoe last, and so that's what that feather edge uh, number allowance represents. And then finally there's the fill up and. That has to do with, uh, it's not a factor for the ball girth so much as for the instep girth. When you have uh, feet with different arch heights, uh, and a, say a low, like a flat um, arch, um, it's going to almost be touching when you look at a cross section, the bottom of the shoe in that area. Whereas with a high arch, there's going to be a lot of airspace there. So this fill up is dependent on the arch height specified when, uh, if you were to have edited the foot before. Uh, before doing the build process. And then finally the totals column shows the sum of the, all these numbers, all of the allowances for each of these uh, individual measurements. And there's just one last detail I wanted to add and that's uh, I have a note on here on the build form that says note that the last back curvature is subtracted later in the build process. So uh, different shoe lasts have different uh, uh, back curvature, back profiles and uh, this can affect how the foot fits into the shoe. Uh, specifically, like the, the back of the foot docks up not against the back edge of the bottom surface, uh, the bottom um, edge of the shoe last, but rather right to that back profile curve. And uh, so that then that shape of that curve, it's not known until after you build the last and you pull it from the template and grade it and everything. Um, so that's why uh, there's a note here saying that... Uh, that the the last of the length is going to change just slightly depending on what that back curvature is, and that's only true for a bespoke last where we're trying to fit of um, have a foot fit the shoe last properly. Uh, when it's a standard shoe last, of course, this number is going to be exactly what you end up uh, getting. And that's all for this tutorial. Um, I know it's a lot uh, to cover in one tutorial, and it's a uh, kind of a bit complex. Yeah, and it might take a little while to fully grasp it, um, but it's all related, so I wanted to get it all into this one tutorial. Um, now, I recommend checking out the post on the website. Uh, sometimes this kind of stuff, it's easier to take in by reading small chunks at a time. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions, and uh, thanks for watching.